I thought I'd never say this, but it's it's good to see everybody here. Uh, I always looked at this day as Groundhog Day, but I no longer do. But no, it's great to be back. Um, we're obviously this time of year gives us a chance to be around the, the draft prospects. But just to give you an update where we are. We, as a coaching staff, you know we've had a chance to get through all the video, and we're starting to build the, you know, the playbooks, offense, defense, and special teams, and um, and it's. Now we're starting to, you know, formulate how we're going to put it together with our roster. Obviously, we have a lot of free agents, uh, a lot of business decisions in front of us, and you know we're still working through that process. But just excited to be here and to get the draft, you know, process started. Uh, so with that, I'll take your questions. Coach, what are your, what are your early impressions on the Cowboys organization? Uh, the organization, the Cowboys organization, it's a, it's a unique place. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed. Every day there, the energy is is awesome. Um, I, I think you know you, you feel that from the first time you walk through the doors. Uh, so it's you know the passion, and it really starts with the Jones family, uh, just the way they approach everything. So uh, I've, I've really have had my head down, and I think like all coaches, when you're in that first year, uh, you're just trying to get to the next meeting, uh, get things organized, and uh, you know because there's a, there's a lot of things that are different for all of us. I got a lot of coaches on my staff that I have not worked with before so just you know putting together protocol policy you know the approach and, and everything we uh, that everything that we do so whether it's from game management to uh, football technology going to Oxnard for training camp so we just have uh, been grinding through all those things and, and just you know just trying to make sure we're ready uh, we will be ready when the players get back officially April 6th. Is Dak Prescott your franchise quarterback? Dak Prescott? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's 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 exactly where we want to be uh, with Dak. I think what he's done uh, to this point, you know, speaks to itself. I mean, and really, Dak is in a he's in a business situation right now. I've, I've gone through this as a head coach with a number of my players in the past, and I think, like uh, you know, like anything, it's just time to be patient and, and let the let the business. Uh, people work out the business matter, and, and that's really where that's really where we are as an organization, and, and that's where Dak is in his personal flight to, to get to get a contract done. Any concern about if they have to tag him and he doesn't get a deal done, not being available for offseason? You know, really the hypotheticals. Uh, really, it's 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 not it's not really anything I've ever spent much time thinking about. Um, we'll just take it one day at a time, and, it, and it's a business matter. So, um, obviously, all the. All the things that are involved with that, uh, those are really for Jerry and Steven and, and Dax representatives. Hey, Coach, the play calls you're used to using, a number of players here, they only know signs. Have you given thoughts to adjusting it for the modern college player? Because they only know signs coming off the sideline as opposed to, uh, you know, toss 38, halfback lead, fullback pass to black. Okay. Awesome. Um, it's, <laughs> I think you gotta, you got to look at all those things, you know, and, and really – you know, you have to have a basis, you know, a language, a starting point, and then with that, you, you do have signs that, that you know, uh, that pull all that together because no huddle, two minutes. So, um, but yes, you, it's important to be very aware of um, the system that the player that you that you bring into your program, where he's come from. You know, I've, I've coached receivers that that um, you know during their college career, they just you know looked over to the sideline and they ran one of five routes. So, uh, you know, that's all part of a normal adjustment into the league, and, 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 and I think you're well taken up, but those are things you can learn from as a coach and, and how you can use some of those thoughts and ideas, signals, um, as part of your two-minute no-huddle offense. Well, you said you'd never give up play calling again. I have a new job, <laughs> so uh, I, I get to start over and take all those never-again statements back. But uh, no, I, I think when you just look at the, the big picture, um, you know, these decisions that – that, um, that I'm making, uh, particularly early in my tenure, I've had a lot of time to think about it. Uh, I've had a chance to study the opportunities that were in front of me uh, for quite some time. And, and Dallas was the one opportunity that, that was, was, was something I felt was important to keep the current offense in place because of the success that they've had in the past. You know, the productivity um, on offense is very high. So there's, there, there, are, there are always be Things that are different. I think anytime you have a coaching change, that's that's obvious. Um, our approach to offense will change. Uh, the design of how we we put things together will be different. But it's important to build off of the successful concepts and particularly the language that's in place. Uh, and, I, and I'm I'm excited to work with Kellen and 
Uh, I've really enjoyed our, our meetings, uh, so I really like the way he looks at the game. Mike, what was your experience like? What was your experience like interviewing with the Giants before you got this job? And were you surprised you left there without an offer? Well, I, mean, I had a great experience with the Giants. I really enjoyed the day that, that I was there. First class organization. I uh, can't say enough about John Mayer and just you know the time that I was able, able to spend there. So it was a lot of fun. Um, thought the interaction was good, but you know, hey, it's. Uh, you know, it's it's a process, and, and things happen for a reason. And, and I'm very blessed to be a Dallas Cowboy. You seem rejuvenated after leaving or departing from Green Bay. What did you do after that happened? And are you excited about this new opportunity with the Cowboys? Well, I'm excited about the the uh, opportunity with the Cowboys. I'm trying to say that as I'm rejuvenated. Um, you know, give us some energy there. So that's what my <laughs> media coaches told me. Not, not that, and I don't have, but so, but with that, um, you know, I've had a year off. I mean, I, I think like anything in life, if you have a chance to step back, reflect, and and, and really, you know, take take the time to to be honest, be transparent about the things that you can improve on. Um, that that that's all that's all been part of the process um, that that I went through leading up to you know getting the job in Dallas. But, you know, frankly, uh, I haven't reflected one minute since I've arrived in Dallas because, you know, like like, all, like everybody, the coaching staff, we've had our head down and, and we're grinding away. But, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, it's a great opportunity. Um, being at the Combine is always fun. I mean, there's always great energy, you know, at, at, in you know, this whole city when, when the Combine comes to town. So I'm just uh, thankful to be here. Uh, not really. Um, it, it, to me, it's it's always this game will always be about the players, um, and 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 you can never lose sight of that. I mean, the locker room it, it's something that I, that I've always preached um, as a head coach. The locker room is in, is the most important room in the building, and, and, and all your resources and your attention and your energy needs to, to point towards that because they play the game. They're the performers. They're they're really what this game's all about. So uh, coaching is important. Uh, I'm not, not saying that at all, but uh, at the end of the day, they're, they're the priority. So, and, and I think that needs to be the case. You said Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott was the type of quarterback that could give you a championship. Why? Well, I think, you know, number one, uh, you just look what he's done in, in his time in, in the league. I mean, I think he's he's been impressive. I know he's, I've been impressed with him since the first time I saw him play live, you know, in, up, up, up in Green Bay uh, when, they, when they came to the Lambeau there. Uh, so, you know, first impressions I think are, are very important when you when you see quarterbacks on the field because it, it you know in person evaluations, particularly at that position, I, I, I've always carried more weight uh, as, as far as how I felt about a player. So uh, I think he's he's gone off to a great start. He's he's built a really good foundation. Um, I'm told he's a tremendous leader. So, in in my philosophy, as we as we get with. You know the, the personnel department, and as we go through that, I mean, the defense defenses get you to the championship. The, the quarterbacks win championships, and I, and I definitely feel Dak is is that quarterback. You had interactions with him lately. I've, I've, we've been in touch. Yeah, we've been in touch. Just by phone call, or yes, just just um, you know, once again, he's he's going through this business situation, and I think we all need to respect that. Mike, you've talked about the players, the importance. The next big event's the uh, draft in Las Vegas, and just how that perception, how are things changed? And not only the Raiders in Vegas, but now you got the draft coming up in Vegas, and how that's just your thoughts on that. How? Well, I mean, the draft in Vegas, I, th I think it's great. Uh, I've been to Vegas too many times in my life, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's it's grown a lot since the last time I was out there. And I, I think, you know, the, the NFL being a part of uh, the landscape out there is, is awesome. So the draft, uh, what they've done with the draft, the, the event that, that, that that's created, I think is phenomenal for the fans. And, and you know, at the end of the day, anytime you can make you know make it better for the fans, it's it's good for everybody. Using your quarterback school was your QB school that you did in the offseason was something you always kind of lamented after the, the 2010 CBA. And your time off this year out, have you had a chance to think about how to rework that, or are you kind of also waiting on this CBA? Well, I mean, it's it's always been reworked since 2011. I mean, it's just you get, it's just how you you integrate it. The beauty of the old system was. You're able to have, you know, three or four. You know, it was like three weeks where it was totally uninterrupted. You know, you, you were out there every day with the quarterbacks, just in a one-on-one -on -one atmosphere. You know, the, the the time in the classroom was was plentiful. So, you know, now it's regulated. So you have to you have to build it into the you know in, into the off-season program. Uh, we'll, we'll start that. Um, 
in phase two. You know, so there'll be components of the quarterback school that, that'll be part of that schedule. Time off. Was that particular offensive attack you had the chance to watch that find your eye? You said I'm going to play this. Yeah, uh, there's a, there's a lot of things. Uh, we you know we, we were able to you know gather trends, put together trend tapes. So there's there's a lot of things conceptually that were uh, of interest, and it's it's not as much new plays, just really variations of concepts that you that you've used and. You know, my experience is the NFL is, is, is like a big cycle. You know, there's there's concepts that that come into play in, in the '90s and go back out and come. You know, are starting to come back in. You're seeing a lot more two back offense that's coming back into the league. You know, last year, particularly with the success. You know, when you when you look at New England, the Super Bowl run two years ago. You know, San Francisco is doing a great job of it. So you just pay attention to those trends and. Um, you know, it's more about the variations that come off of the things that you believe in. Kenny's going to grab the brand. Is what are the biggest needs? I guess you've got all the personnel with, with the, the Cowboys already. What are the biggest needs for this team, and how different is your player compared to what's on this team already? Well, I, I think, you know, when you talk about needs, you, 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 you can't have enough good football players. And I always point to my past experience in 2010. 2010, we, there's, uh, you know, it took 77 players to win a Super Bowl. So, um, so I've, I've never really... You know, I'm not a believer in you're one player away or two players away from from winning a championship. So uh, you have to, you want to, you know, have as many veterans as you possibly can. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to, to coach a more experienced football team. Uh, but that you know, that rookie class is so important, and, and really bringing that veteran group and that rookie class together is, is really where the really good teams take a big step, particularly in November. So just paying attention more to those to those types of things and making sure that how we install and, and how we lay out this off-season program, we're able to get the veterans up to snuff, but more importantly on that rookie orientation when a new group comes in that we can we can get these guys meshed as fast as we can. Yeah. I, I think like anything, you, you want as, as competitive a roster as you possibly can. I, I understand where some of the obvious um, you know positions people want to talk about. But, you know, our free agents list is, is high. You know, we're 25, so, um, you know, my first goal is, a, is, is try to get as many of those guys back as we can um, and then see what, see what we can add because, you know, as a coach, you always want to have the most competitive roster you possibly can. Hey, Mike, how, how, how difficult? Those guys back, you know, Amari Cooper and Randall Cobb both hitting free agency. Do you anticipate them on the roster? And with Randall, who you've worked with before, how much would having him in the building help your transition? I, I think definitely. I mean, the goal is to have both both those guys back. And, you know, just, you know, Amari, I thought he, you know, having a chance to get through all the tape as a staff, you know, he, he did a lot of great things on tape. And it really looks like he's in sync with with Dak, and, and, and I'd even say Randall even more. So I was real, I was very impressed with with Randall last year. I mean, he's you know he was banged up uh, a couple of years prior to that, but I thought he I thought he had a heck of a season in Dallas last year. I was very impressed with his video. Hey, Mike, what did to say about the rhetoric of the Tom Brady circus where he's going to land? How somehow, some way, Dallas ended up in the mix? Uh, I don't have no comment on that. How have your talks been with Jason Witt and Sean Lee, two veteran guys? Good. I've, I've had a chance to talk to both both uh, Jason and Sean. You know, Sean's traveling right now, so I um, had a chance to see him. Jason, we had a chance to sit down at, at length and talk about a number of things that, that he's thinking about. So, um, But, you know, those decisions and, and how we move forward, it, you know, that's, that's something that we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. Hey, Mike, Mike how difficult was difficult last year, Mike? I mean, you, your family's in town. You have to drive past Lambo all the time. Just how difficult it was. Difficult? Yeah, to you last year. I don't think it was difficult at all. I mean, I had to go to rehab every day next to, you know, home to the Bell and Title Town uh, Orthopedics. You know, it was right next door. So I got to see I got to see Lambeau probably three or four times a week. So, I mean, it's, it's part. I don't know. Do you live in Green Bay, Bill? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's kind of hard to go anywhere up there without seeing the stadium. So, <laughs> I, I mean, so it's, uh, no, it was... You know that's that's where my my kids are born and that's their hometown and so really the, the year off was was very beneficial for us as a family. But when you're, right, when you're surrounded by Packers, know, Packers, you know, Packers all the time, isn't that tough at some level? Considering all the energy and heart and soul you poured in the place. Oh no, I, I, I have you know I have great memories and, and uh, positive thoughts about my time there, and, and I'm thankful for not only you know the opportunity to coach here, but the relationships that that I'll, that I will always have. You know I have. A lot of close friends that, that you know still work for the Packers and, and um, you know the community that we live in there, you know that'll always be part of our family. A lot of creating special teams this offseason. What 
How much of the focus is that as a new league? Uh, very important. I, I think when you when you you make the commitment to special teams, you know that your your roster needs to reflect that. So that's something as as we get into the you know the evaluation process, even with the draft picks and, and, and the veterans that are out there that 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 were you know se- you know special teams is just not second nature. You know they're not offensive guys that play on special teams. So uh, it, it's a focus of ours, and and uh, you know I'm excited about what John Fossil brings to our organization. Watching games for a season mm-hmm. on the couch or wherever, did your thoughts change at all on the replay or the sky judge concept? You know, I, I think like a lot of things with officiating, I, you know, those guys are in a tough spot. And I, I think any time you want to improve decision making, when you give individuals more responsibility, you know, that, that's, that, that might not be the best road to travel. So I, I think with the league's doing and the conversations that they're having, um, it, it's it's very healthy. Just you know, talking to Stephen uh, Jones about this last night. You know, I, you know, we're definitely talking about the right things. You know, education between officiating and coaching is is something that I think we can all continue to improve on, and you know, the collaboration will only make it better. So, um, the, you know, the, the Sky Judge is is, a, is an excellent resource. I, mean, I think it's something you have to you have to look at, but. I think it's like any resource. If it's not I- integrated into the everyday operation, I, I think that you know you're, you're, it's probably not as productive as you'd like. So, ever ever with you know the league decides and and the committees decide, I think the fact that they're they're, they're really talking about the right things and, and and trying to make it part of the normal operation, I, I think will definitely improve. It's on a couple features of the proposed CBA, one being a 17-game uh, season and the other being an extra playoff team. What are your thoughts about those two particular? I mean, the extra game, I, I think of when, I, when I think of the 17th game, you know, I, and I also point to the, to the preseason. I, I think the, going to the third preseason game, you know, makes total sense. I think everybody's in, a, in agreement on that. Um, you know, the fact that you could, you know, potentially have two weeks to get ready for your opener, I, I, I like that. Um, I, I think it gives you a chance to really Take a step back because you know that, that that last week is is difficult because you you know you got a you got a number of you know, balls in the air where you're trying to pick your 53, make sure you're develop you know getting the young guys the opportunities and but you're also trying to get ready for the opener. So I I think going to three games makes perfect sense. I'm I'm excited about that. Uh, the extra playoff game I, I think is awesome. Uh, I think playoff football there's there's nothing like playoff football. It's it's a whole different level. Um, and, you know, everybody that's been involved in playoffs understands that. So, and I, I think it would definitely be great for the fans. But uh, playoff football, having an extra extra team in there, I think will be awesome. How will you be working with Stephen Jones to evaluate players? Well, I mean, we, we have a, you know, a network, an operation. You know, Stephen and Will McClade is um, very impressed with what they have in place there. You know, especially from a technology standpoint, uh, you know their analytics set up the way they go about is different than, than my past some of my past experiences. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and um, it's you know we're off to a good start. Thoughts on using the read option? The read option, I mean, it's definitely been a weapon. Uh, I think Dak has uh, done a great job with that. Um, it's you know somebody who has a lot of experience. Both him and Zeke, you can see the, um, it, it's something that they they do very naturally. It's, you know, it's part of the cut-ups and the evaluation that I've been uh, very successful. So, um, you know, and, and I just think when you you look at the way, you know, he's built and, you know, in his experience in that particular concept, it's definitely something that we'll use moving forward. You always said you're a quarterback-focused offense. How does that relate? Well, I mean, it really, I mean, it, the, making a quarterback su- successful, I think, is really common sense. I mean, it's it's really the... You know, part of the bylaws and, and how the West Coast offense was designed. So, I mean, it, that's what I always believe in. But, you know, because he touches the ball every play. I mean, and he's the, he's the player that's going to have the, the ball in his hand at the most critical part of the game, you know, in the fourth quarter. But, you know, as far as your playmakers, you know, you, you, you know there's, you've got five premier positions, obviously running backs, one of them, and you get, you get the ball to your playmaker. So... Uh, Zeke will touch the football, you know, plenty in, in our offense. So I mean, really, so when I say it's all about the quarterback, it, it's not taken away. You know, someone has to give the ball to the playmaker. So it makes sense to you know to, to develop that way. But yeah, Zeke Zeke will be a primary focus for us offensively.